Hello guys, in today's video I want to share something that I think is useful and that is um, how you can basically make sure that you work with validated classes. So in the case that you're working with, for example, uh, a widget that is displaying some stats, whether those stats come from a character class or from a player state class, um, that doesn't really matter. But when you're working with a widget that is displaying some stats from either of those classes, for example, then the scenario that I want to explain is how you can make sure that you work with uh, a reference of that class that is properly validated. So uh, basically what I mean by that is if you have this widget and you have it event construct, uh, you might want it to then get information from that uh, character class or player state class on the event construct here. Uh, and then you want to perhaps create a binding that displays the stats from that other class. Um, and that might fill that cast to that other class. So this is the player state example here that cast might fill. And that uh, can be due to you uh, running this event construct directly. Uh, and then the player state or the character not being initialized or available yet. So what that means is perhaps you are uh, starting some user interface before your actual character is spawned and is actually available in the world. Um, so then you're trying to cast on the event construct here from this widget to that character class. Uh, and the information that you're trying to get from that character class might not be available yet. So in that scenario, your cast will fill. And then uh, what some of you do is that you run some delay logic here to keep trying to cast to that class. And then as soon as that casting actually succeeds, you might store a reference to it, or you might fetch your data from it that you're looking for, uh, and then display that to the user. So, so that's one scenario. Uh, and I want to cover what I do in that scenario. Um, and hopefully this helps you guys and is useful in your project. So let's say that we have a widget that displays some player stats. And let's say that this displays the user level. So I'm simply going to call this user, or let's call it player's level. Um, so that's basically all it is. And I want you guys to kind of imagine this because it's just an example scenario. And then that level, it is actually stored inside of our player state. So this is my player state class over here. Uh, and this is also just an example. So here's my player state over here. And then inside of the player state, we would have a variable probably of the integer type if it's a level uh, that says player level and it just has some kind of value, right? Doesn't really matter what. Then what uh, most of you will probably do is that you would type get player state because that's where you want to get this e information from. And then in this widget, you want to basically cast to that player state. So you would do it just like this. Um, and then you would probably try to save a reference to it. So probably like this, you would promote this to variable and have a reference inside of this widget to that player state so that this widget can fetch information from this player state um, at all times that this widget is in your screen or for example, on a binding. So you might wanna click on your text and bind it to information from that player state. So over here from this cast right now, we can actually get here in binding. Um, that player level variable. What you could also do is click on create a binding and then you would go like this. So this, this function that is now created is bound to this text. You can see that over here. Uh, and then inside of here, you could then get your player state and you could then get your uh, variable from here. So in this example, it's got the player level and then you could display that player level like this and have that binding set up, right? Um, but this variable might not be valid and that can be because this cast might fail because your uh, UI might be in your screen before this class is properly initialized. And let's say that you're not trying to get this information from your uh, player state, but character, then your character might not even be spawned in the world or it might have died. And then this cast is invalid um, and then you won't be able to fetch information from it. So what would you guys probably typically do? Uh, this is what I see a lot on YouTube and other tutorials that you would type delay over here. And then you would probably try to do it like this. And as long as the cast fills, let's just keep trying and essentially we'll get a reference, right? And then inside of the binding, we can simply validate it so that if it is not valid, it will not cause us a lot of editor uh, errors essentially, right? So this way uh, you would now think like this is properly set up. And that's kind of true. I mean, this isn't really wrong, but let's say that you're trying to do this not to a player state, but to a character and that that character dies and that you don't become that humanoid character anymore, but you suddenly become a car 
Weird scenario, I know, but in that scenario, your cast to your character class will keep failing all the time, and you might not have this installed inside of a widget, as I do in this example. You might have this in your player controller or anywhere else, but essentially what I'm trying to say is this cast might be able to fail all the time, and then you do keep running a delay node somewhere in your uh, game, somewhere in your project. And that's, uh, that's kind of a leakage of performance, and you don't really want that. So what I came up with myself, what I I use in my own projects is that I basically made a macro for this and the macro will try to cast to a certain class and after a certain timeout period it's very simple uh, then we simply stop trying and that macro I can call it over here because I also installed it inside of the widget class so I can do get player state uh, and then over here we see my own custom macro and this will basically do this type of logic, but then uh, in a bit more of a neat manner. So on event construct, I'm also trying to get my player state here. And then if it's validated, so if, if it is a success, basically, then I can simply get my reference here. And I have a timeout period of 10 seconds. And if this fails, then basically we are going to stop because then we conclude here after that whatever period you install here, we conclude that we can simply not cast to that class and we're going to stop trying to prevent this uh, infinite loop from going on in your project. So what I want to share with you guys today is this actual macro and how you can set it up. So let's double click it. And there you go. It's a very simple logic. So basically what we have here inside of the macro is an, an execution pin here to go in. We got a float with a default value of 10, so that's 10 seconds. Then on the sequence, we're going to try to cast to a specific class. So in this scenario, the player state here, and I call it get player state. For me, I understand that this is my player state. You might want to give it a more of a specific name. And your cast might immediately succeed. So off of that, we'll go into validated. You can also type succeed here. And then you can pass through that reference of that player state or whatever class you're trying to cast here, right? I also do this here for my game state. So you could do this with any type of class that you're trying to get a reference of, essentially. And if the cast failed, we're, we're, we are going to go into that simple delay logic. So one second delay. And then we have a do n here. So that means the n is equal here to the timeout period, as you see. So we're going to try this an n amount of times, which by default is 10. And if the counter is not equal to 10 in this example, then we are going off of false here. And we're simply going to try to cast again. So then let's say that it fills once, it fills twice. And then on number three, it will finally succeed after three seconds. Then we get our reference. But let's say that we keep trying and that we hit that timeout period of 10. That means that the counter is 10 is equal to the timeout. Once that is true, we are going to say filled and we're going to stop trying basically. Uh, and instead of installing this macro specifically here inside of this specific widget over here under macros, because you could do it over here. What I did is that I use a macro library. I have a, a video about that links in the description of this video. So basically my macro library is a library of macros and that is class specific. So I have a macro library here for the user widget type. You can get one by right clicking, going to blueprints, going to macro library, and then you can select the class type that you want your library to exist for. So in my scenario, I typed in user widget and then here you go. You got a user widget and you create one. Then you get this. And then inside of there, you can simply make macros. And then those macros you can then call throughout your entire game in any widget. So over here, I can now type get player state. And then my macro over here pops up. And that's how I replaced this setup that I see a lot of people using with a bit of a neater setup, in my opinion. If you guys have a, a better setup, then please leave it down in the description. This works great for me and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Also guys, please be sure to check out our Patreon. We have a cool example project there that covers multiplayer content. So if you guys decide to support us there, we really appreciate it. All right guys, bye bye.